Kabam finally did it, man. They finally did it. Man, I, I am so excited to tell you guys about the biggest and best update that has ever come to Alliance Wars since the introduction of Alliance Wars. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So I'm in I'm in an Alliance War map right now, right? And, uh, you know, I'm taking a look around. Okay, you know, looks pretty standard, right? Let me go ahead and click on the, uh, the linked node button here. And, uh, what? Excuse me? Wasn't there normally links going to this Sasquatch from these other three fights? That's weird. Oh, that's right. They removed all of the linked nodes. <laughs> and this is not a bug. Actually, technically, there are still three linked nodes. You can't see them because they're down at this point. Um, but there's, there's nodes uh, going to the boss node from 49, 54, and 55. Those, I believe, are the only three linked nodes remaining. Everything else has been removed. Uh, and as far as I'm concerned, this this is the best update Kabam has ever made to Alliance Wars. And it flew under the radar. Check out this post they made, uh, you know, uh, on the forums here. This was a few days ago. It was mostly talking about the Alliance War tactics update that they're doing. And I'm going to talk about this in a little bit too, but this is, it's fine. The Alliance War tactic update is mostly fine. Um, nothing super game changing right off the bat. Just a, just a little bit of an update. But then there was an update. You see, this was originally posted on January 19th. There's been an update on January 21st for the linked nodes. Going into season 24, we'll be removing all linked nodes except for the ones, uh, except for the one attack to the boss from Mini Boss Island. Uh, we hope this will let players have an easier time coordinating and getting through the map in a timely manner. And it will. So, dude, for the long, like, my biggest issue with the entirety of this game, I'm not even talking about just in Alliance War, I'm talking about the entire game. My biggest, most frustrating thing that I, that I run into is that I want to play War, but I have to wait until I have five energy to take advantage and get the most value out of my boost. Because of course, in Alliance War, you want to minimize your risk as much as possible when going through nodes. You're gonna die from time to time, happens to everybody, but boosting up will of course prevent deaths um so of course since boosts are also expensive you want to wait and make sure you have five energy before moving but there's also linked nodes which means you need to also wait for the people around you to be capped on an energy so that they can take advantage and get the most out of their boosts as well and then once you're both capped out on energy you also have to find time for when you could both play at the same time and it's not just two players at a time always um, sometimes, if you're lucky, it's only two players at a time, but we've had wars where we had to coordinate six, seven people all at once uh, to make sure that we could all play within a, you know, within a 15 minute window of one another um, to, to maximize the value of our boost. It's a crazy system. And the change that I was requesting for the longest time, I made a one hour video uh, for Alliance War, and the, the, the first point of that video was uh, I really want to see uh, boost that lasts the entire duration of war because of this issue. This, it doesn't 100% fix it, but this is as close as it gets without giving me exactly what I was asking for because now you at least don't have to wait for other people to be capped out on energy to move. You don't have to coordinate that hard in order to get through the map. Um, there's still tons of coordination that needs to take place. Um, at the highest level, you still want to kind of figure out who's going to be taking which fights and stuff like that. There's tons of planning that goes into it. Um, you know, once again, shout out to the officers, not just of my alliance, but of other alliances that put in all this work too. Um, so there's still that coordination factor. And the, the linked nodes being layered on top of that was just such a hassle. So now we're actually going to be able to play war when we want. You don't have to uh, stay up later at night. I mean, maybe sometimes you will, but... It was like a consistent thing where certain people had to just mess up their sleep schedules just to just to play this game. Ridiculous, man. Absolutely ridiculous. So I could not be happier with this change to Alliance War, where all of the linked nodes are removed except for the ones going to uh, the boss. The other changes coming to Alliance War all have to do with the defensive tactics, which we can take a look at in game here. Defensive tactics, they're only active in tier five or higher of Alliance Wars. And basically, they're removing Stubborn and Flow, for now at least. They might bring them back another time. And we're going to have three to choose from. Uh, Protect, which was here last season. I'm going to read through that in just a moment. Uh, Regenerator, this one's brand new, and it's also brand new the way that it works. So I'm going to get into that in just a moment as well. 
and then bulwark which we've seen in the past and is is being brought back here so let's actually start with bulwark so uh let's look at the defensive portion of it first so hashtag metal defenders are immune to armor break debuffs whenever a metal defender loses more than three percent of their max health from a single strike they gain an indestructible buff for 10 seconds the indestructible is removed when the attacker finishes a special attack and goes on cooldown for 10 seconds um it's a little bit cut off there i don't know if there was supposed to be something else uh, after that but anyway the attack tactic is if the attacker is hashtag metal whenever a damage over time debuff is applied to the defender remove all indestructible buffs created by the bulwark defense tactic uh, okay, so I'm not sure. Honestly, I'm really not too, too sure which one we're going to be seeing of these three, most commonly at least. Um, but let's let's take a look at Protect now. So Protect, like I said, this one was already here last season, but just as a refresher. Whenever the attacker deals more than 300% of their base attack in a single hit to a size large or XL defender, the defender gains a stack of protection, reducing all damage taken by 30%. Stacks of protection are capped at four, and the defender loses two stacks when they are intercepted. So, yeah, you either need to intercept or have the, the power of the attack tactic, which is, if the attacker is size large or XL, and they knock down the defender, all stacks of protection from the defense tactic are removed. Um, okay, so like I said, we, we honestly, uh, this past season, um, we've seen... I don't know if it was an exactly a 50-50 split, but we saw a, a lot of Protect mixed in with Stubborn, um, whereas previously it was like Stubborn 100% of the time. So a lot of alliances were already switching to Protect. Uh, this is the new one, though, and this is the most interesting one as far as I'm concerned, because instead of just taking the current hashtags in-game, what Kabam is doing is they're going to create a new alliance war tag, essentially. This way they have better control over who gets uh, affected by the defensive tactic. And I'm going to read uh, from the forum post real quick uh, exactly why they're doing this. Um, so it says right here, new tactics will be focusing on mid high tier champs and intentionally exclude the strongest defenders. We found that champions like Dr. Doom, Thing, and Korg are strong regardless of tactic. I, although I, I bet in the future <laughs> we're going to see some of them get tags too. But anyway, uh, we're aiming to help champions that are decent on their own, but shine with a tactic rather than push the strongest even further. So I think it's a good change. I think they're absolutely right here in that certain champions, they don't really need the additional help of a tactic. They're already pretty difficult. And when you're combining nodes in Alliance Forge on top of that champion, like layering a, another difficulty on top of that with the defensive tactics... That could be a little bit too much. Um, I'm going to talk more about the difficulty later, though. Let's let's read what this uh, new defensive tactic actually does. So, if the defender is a hashtag Alliance War Regenerator, uh, whenever they trigger a regeneration effect, they also trigger a power gain passive, granting 20% of their max power over 6 seconds, stacking up to 2. This power gain is removed when the defender becomes heal blocked and will not trigger in the first one second so yeah if they if they have a heal you gotta you gotta get rid of that heal or, or power control them or, or something because yeah it's um they're gonna be gaining some powers alongside the healing uh okay so the attack tactic here if the attacker is hashtag alliance war damage over time while the defender is inflicted with two or more damaging debuffs they become passively heal blocked uh, and new damaging debuffs reapply the heal block so couple things like for, first off like i said i i'm a fan of this change there are a couple of of little things that uh we'll have to see how it goes and you know kabam maybe they'll have to make some adjustments down the road to this um the first thing is that it might get a little confusing there's a lot of champions with regeneration effects there's a lot of champions with damage over time effects but now we have to keep track of which one is tagged alliance war specific uh to those so i'm sure that's going to take some time to learn um, looks like Kabam, they, they did lay out a list of champions, which I'm not going to read through all of these, but, uh, if, if you want to, uh, check out the forum post or just pause the video and, uh, and read this here, this is the, uh, the regenerator champions. And then to take advantage of the attack tactic, um, this is the, uh, the, the champions, uh, that will be tagged with Alliance War damage over time. Um, so you could you could read through all of those. So like I said, I do think this is a good idea, you know, not buffing up the, the champions that are already so nasty on defense and, uh, you know, providing some additional challenge to champions that, you know, really 
aren't that hard on their own. Like, Angela is not a difficult champion to take down. Um, and I honestly, I don't really expect her to be a difficult champion even after the regenerator node kicks in. But I'm sure there's going to be some, some challenging champions uh, within here. Especially combined with the nodes and things like that. And yeah, like I, I, it's hard to say, but I think that the regenerator node here is going to take over and, and be the go-to tactic. Um, just because there's power gain involved. And anytime there's power gain involved, like... Pfft, Dude, you just get some nasty combos where you're eating special threes. So, yeah, I'm a little bit worried about that. Um, but we'll see. Like, I, I honestly don't know if that one's going to be picked more than the others. That's just kind of my speculation. Uh, but just from a conceptual standpoint, I do like the, the direction that Kabam's heading in uh, for this update. Uh, just real quick on the, on the note of difficulty... Although I am a little bit worried about the difficulty that uh, these new tactics could possibly bring, uh, there does need, you know, difficulty needs to be there in Alliance War. If things get too easy, then what actually happens is the death count, the total death count goes down, and then each and every death that does happen is felt that much more. And this might only really matter for the absolute top level alliances but they're the alliances that that put the most amount of of time and effort into war where there's like single digit deaths and i'm not even talking about single digit for each alliance i'm talking about single digit total <laughs> for both sides there's less than 10 deaths total uh for for all 60 members playing what does that do to somebody when they die man thinking about that like that's that puts a tremendous amount of pressure on each individual to play perfectly. So I actually, for the longest now, uh, going back to that same video that I talked about where I was just talking about Alliance War, I basically was only talking about two changes to Alliance War for an entire hour. And one of the things I said was I actually kind of want the difficulty in War to go up, but the cost to go down so that things balance out. Because what happens right now is if the difficulty does go up, well, the cost also goes up alongside it, and yeah, then no one can really afford to play this, this mode because um, things just get out of out of control way too quickly. But uh, if Kabam found a way to, you know, somehow increase the difficulty um, in the right way, to be clear, where it doesn't feel like you're just totally getting cheated uh, out of out of the mode or something like that, right? Because that's no fun either. But if they did find a way to uh, somehow increase the difficulty while lowering the cost, um, I think that out, that would actually bring up the death counts, and that might sound like a bad thing at first, where it's going to put more pressure on people because more people are dying, but I think what that would do is that would make it so that if, if you lost a war, you can kind of say, ah, you know, a bunch of us died, we can, you know, we could all improve and let's just try to do better the next time around, versus right now, um, again, this is only for the like the absolute top level alliances. Right now, if if like one person dies, like that might be their only death, and then they're taking like the entire weight of that loss. Even if the other members of the alliance are cool about it, even if they're like, "Hey, man, don't worry, you know, we all die sometimes." Things like that. It's still that that feeling, that that pressure is is pretty intense. So uh, <laughs> yeah, I we'll, we'll have to see. Like I said, it's. That's kind of a topic for another day. Um, that's kind of all I want to talk about in this video. Love these changes in general. The fact that the linked nodes are gone. Oh my God, that is the best thing that's ever happened to Alliance War. Uh, and then I do like the, the change in uh, tactic direction here um, by creating Alliance War specific tags. Um, we'll just have to see how these tactics actually hold up. Um, and yeah, this... This might be a uh, like a flow 2.0 or something like that. Let's 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 hope not, but it could be. But anyway, uh, that'll do it for this video. Thank you all very much for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Take care.